Video editing on Linux is still a big pain today. Whether you just need a couple of cuts here and there or a complex workflow, Linux is very limited here. And I hate to admit that, but I lastly had the chance to dive in this topic and especially compare a whole content creating software experience on Windows, Linux and Mac OS. And in this video, I wanted to share with you my thoughts and my opinions at the moment. No tests, no numbers, it's just gonna be a little chat with you on this interesting topic. I consider myself not only a tech enthusiast, but also a big fan of music, photography and video making. This doesn't necessarily mean that I do that all of my free time, nor that I master any of the abilities required to be a great musician or a professional photographer. But I like to entertain myself during different periods of the year, at least with one of these beautiful arts. Now, you definitely need some dedicated software for any of them, but I wanted to talk specifically of video editing because it really heavily relies on your computer skills. There's definitely no other way of creating a nice, well-polished video without a good video editing software. But for full-time Linux users, there's still no good choice out there. So let's analyze the main softwares available today. The first that comes to mind while talking about Linux video editing, after excluding very basic and even sometimes useless applications, is of course Caden Live. It's got a relatively easy to use interface that's a bit resembling of Sony Vegas and good basic functionality. I mean, you can easily cut, apply transitions, text overlays, and even light color grading with curves or just RGB sliders. You got, of course, keyframes, you can transform, crop, and you also got some very basic motion tracking functions that I was never able to try because they're one of the things that drive the software completely crazy. What I mean is that as soon as you start tinkering with anything that may require a bit more CPU power, Kden Live either behaves abnormally, doesn't respond to some comments, or more often it just simply crashes. And I have to admit, it's got a really powerful autosave and recovery feature. I've never lost more than 5 to 10 minutes of work, or sometimes even fully recovered. But it's very, very annoying, especially considering the fact that the whole software is single-threaded, meaning that it cannot use more than one CPU thread at once, and therefore basically always crashing. There seems to be a very low threshold in terms of hardware resources usage, and if you go above that, even if your computer could theoretically handle it without problems, the software just crashes. Sure, you can create video proxies, but this is time-consuming and it will just delay the moment of the crash, not avoid it. Not mentioning that you have to wait for the proxy creation every time you import a new piece of footage in your project. And of course, single-threaded rendering times are huge. Now, I've used Canon Live for a while. I've also tried it on Plasma, which should be its native environment, but nothing changed. I got really tired of it and I tried Blender. Blender is a universe, kind of an operating system on its own. It's got basically everything you need, ranging from of course 3D modeling, and you can also model objects for 3D printing, to node-based video effects and color correction, to the classic video sequence editor. It looks like a dream, right? Well, I found Blender atrociously difficult to use. It's the classic nerdy program, that you need pages on pages on pages of manuals or hours on hours of video tutorials to be able to master, and with tons and tons of keyboard shortcuts that have no GUI counterpart. I mean, of course I want to learn them at some point, but if I'm just starting to use the software, I want to be able to select multiple items without noting that I need to press B. Sure enough, I was able to learn how to use the VSC, make simple cuts, transitions, transformations, some masking and even motion tracking, some color correcting, some text, oh uh, wait, there's still no native function to add proper text overlays, either you model your text in the 3D sculpting part of the software or you're stuck with the default monospace font. Not to mention the problems you'll face if you need to deal with multiple FPS videos. Because of the way Blender is designed, animations are the key here, 
And because your videos will always be treated as a sequence of single frames, your project will be stuck on a single set FPS rate. This means that you need to record all of your videos at the same rate. Now, this sounds easy, and it is, but sometimes you may want to import a clip quickly shot with your phone at 30 FPS in a project that is set to be 60 FPS. And if you do that, your audio will just last twice your video and your video will play at twice the speed. I mean, you could adjust its speed inside of Blender itself, but either it's going to use a lot of hardware resources, making playback of the timeline almost impossible, or if you do the opposite, for instance, importing a 60fps clip in a 30fps project and try to double the speed, you will get like 30 still frames at the end of the clip, and if you cut them you will mess again with the speed, and yeah, in any case something will go wrong, trust me. And speaking of resources, while Blender rendering can use multiple CPU threads, editing and all of the other functions of the software will still be single threaded. And guys, when you deal with a timeline, that has even just two or three video tracks, it starts to be very hard to play back. Again, you can create proxies, but it's time consuming and you need to do that every time you import new footage. Oh, and by the way, Blender doesn't actually have any project management functions. You don't import your media and your project. You just drag them to the timeline in the VSC from your file manager and you won't be able to manage your files from Blender itself. Not a big problem, but sometimes you miss it. So I went with DaVinci Resolve, which is a completely free version with almost all of the needed functions. The problem is that it only recently started to support Linux. Native audio is only supported in the last version. And it's a big, big pain in the ass to install and get up and running. On Arch and on Ubuntu slash Debian based distros, there are respective scripts that help with the installation but they don't handle dependencies and libraries problems. So, you need to deal with them by yourself. There's a thread on the Manjaro forum that worked for me, I will link it in the video description. It's for the previous version of DaVinci Resolve, but it worked for me for the last version too. DaVinci Resolve, as far as I understand, only works on Linux if you have a dedicated GPU, since Intel OpenCL is not yet supported. I tried it on a Debian installation that I made on an external SSD just for this purpose, and it only worked if I ran it with OptiRun. On Arch, it launches without OptiRun, maybe because of the better handling of NVIDIA Optimus, but I still needed OptiRun or it will crash on certain operations. I mean, it was not unstable because I could recreate every single time the circumstances that made it crash, but there's sure enough something to improve. Another important thing is that under Linux, it won't support common video formats like H.264, you have to rely on ProRes, so you need to use FFmpeg to convert your usual H.264 videos to ProRes. There's a script called, you guess, ProRes that I found, I don't remember where, and I will eventually link it in the video description, that you can add to your bash path, and once you run it, it will convert all of the video files in the current directory to ProRes. But of course, this takes time and disk space. A lot of disk space. But if you can overcome this issue, the workflow is smooth and the software fully featured. With anything you may want, it's easy to use with an edit interface that is kind in the middle between Final Cut and Premiere, but then it adds the beautiful color correct tab, packs Fusion with the latest version, which is DaVinci's own node editing app with quite some interesting motion features, and it actually can take the place of Apple Motion or Adobe After Effects. And the thing that I love the most it's got an amazing tracker. It literally takes a few clicks to obscure a face or a car license plate. I love it. The problem, on Windows and Mac OS it performs way better. Feels even more stable, supports H.264 and of course is still free. Now, there are a few things that I wanted to consider. The first one is that I had similar problems with raw photo editing, which I recently started to do again. But Darktable is the only serious application that I found. But its performance is terrible. You need to wait over one second to see what you're doing, what corrections you're applying to your image. Moreover, its functions are all spread throughout different tabs with its own logic that I really didn't quite understand. Adobe Lightroom could actually miss some of the Darktable's functions, 
but it is way easier to use and performs great. Again, GIMP is fine, but still most of its functions are hidden without an easy logic way to find them, while Photoshop is way easier to use. Another thing is that my computer came with a Windows license embedded in the firmware, so I don't have to pay for it and I actually believe that Windows 10 is getting way better. It's becoming lighter, it works fine and it feels pretty stable now. Sure, it will never be flexible and customizable like Linux, but at least it's going in a good direction. On the other hand, my Xiaomi Notebook Pro is pretty much perfect as a Hackintosh and I gave myself a chance to try it. I've been a macOS user for years in the past because it is a stable and lightweight system. It's customizable even in some of the aspects that regard the way the system behaves. It's got Bash and even Rsync, Vim and Cron and some of the other Unix software that I learned to love. But the chances I'm going to buy a new Apple product again are very low. I moved away from their products because I really don't like the path they've taken in the past couple of years with over expensive, faulty and inconvenient products. I mean, we all know the recent facts about Apple. Another thing to consider is that all of the software I use is free or open source, except for the mentioned Lightroom and Photoshop, of which I'm using the trial at the moment, and then I will see in the future if it will be worth paying for them. So, considering all of these facts, should I switch operating system? I really don't know. The thing that I love about Linux is its flexibility, meaning that it's not only able to adapt to your machine, but to yourself as a person and as a computer user. You can use Linux if you know very little about it, and you can use Linux if you know more about it, and then customize all of the aspects of the OS. But this flexibility may also be its fault. All of the different flavors and distributions and configurations make the system inconsistent, and writing professional, complex and reliable software for it seems to be very hard. Some of the single threading issues I had may be overcome by building a desktop, since desktop CPUs have a much, much higher single threaded performance than their laptop counterparts. But it's not in my plans, and even then, you will have much, much higher performance under Windows or Mac OS. Also, you can customize everything, but at the end of the day, is it worth it? I mean, you spend hours tinkering and then something goes wrong, again and again, and so on. I really don't hate any OS, I think that every one of them has its good and bad things. But that's the reason I'm doubting and I'm confused at the moment. Sure you can double boot, and that's what I'm doing now, I'm actually triple booting so that I can try both Windows and Mac OS while still maintaining my main Arch installation, but this is temporary of course. But an our complicated system will just keep confusing you. So these were my thoughts on a very beloved topic. I hope that you enjoyed this little chat, even if it was a bit different than my usual videos. And if you want to share your opinions, I can't wait to read them in the comments. Thank you for staying with me today and I will see you very soon. Ciao!